All right, guys, here we go. Hey, so last day of the unit, right? Yeah, so guys, we, we should probably talk. I'm not going to bring up the calendar because I've already started the screencast and I don't want to pull this apart. But guys, you got to be careful here. Um, I, I communicated this to you previously several times, but let's remind ourselves. Guys, this year is going to end well. <laughs> um, for lack of a better term. Um, guys, remember things have changed. Uh, SAGE can no longer count on your grade. The legislators passed legislation that undid the thing that they did when they undid the thing they did before. And no longer can SAGE count on your grade. It is going away for high school students this year. Um, we're still waiting to see what it's going to be replaced by. But guys, SAGE cannot count on your grade in any fashion. Um, that doesn't mean we're not going to do well on it, uh, partially because you are the kind of people that just do well on things because you care to do well on things. But guys, I would suggest more importantly, we're going to do well on this test because it represents our school, which I know is asinine, which is not a cuss word. Um, I know that it's ridiculous to have a test that teachers don't care about and students don't care about, but then have your school be evaluated publicly based on that test. Understand, our legislators don't get that, which is weird. Well, anyway, so, so guys, we're going to do well on this test. I am going to incentivize this a little bit for you. I'm full of big words today. Um, guys, I am going to throw you a bone on this. I'm actually going to give you extra credit for preparing for the, for the SAGE test. Um, we'll talk more about that later, um, but I, can, I can't count it on your grade, but I can give you extra credit just for getting ready. Um, and so we're going to do that. We'll talk more about that later. But guys, what that means then is the test that you're going to take on Monday is the last test that you get to remediate for the year. Um, we'll take this test on Monday. Then, guys, we're going to call time out. We're going to spend four days getting ready for the SAGE and taking the SAGE. Then we're going to do the last unit of the year. We're going to take the last unit test during school days. And then we are going to take a cumulative final on finals week that will count towards your grade that you can't remediate. So it used to be that we would just use SAGE as your final, but because we can't do that anymore, you will sit a final that Miss Call and I write, and it will count towards your grades, but it's the last time I'll see you, so you can't remediate it. So guys, bottom line is this. You want to do really well on Monday's test. Um, this, is, this is sort of your opportunity to pad your grades, so be aware of that. So what have we got going on? Well, guys, today you're going to learn the last of the new material that you need to know for this unit. You're going to see that it's going to end up in some math. Do any of you have your homework packet out still? So guys, it, it ends up in math. This is going to be your homework today. But guys, this is exactly the same math that you're going to do on the lab that you're going to do on Friday. So guys, you'll notice that I've already given you Friday's lab. That's, so, so grab those now. Guys, this is the lab that you're going to do on Friday. Or on, th sorry, Thursday. So when I see you Thursday, here's the way it's going to go. I'm going to go, hi guys, good morning, thank you everyone for being here on time. Let's grade your homework. And then you'll grade your homework, and then I'm going to go, have fun, and you guys are going to go do the lab. Guys, there will be no lab introduction. You're just going to go do the lab because, guys, I'm going to show you how to do the lab today. That's why I gave you this. So as I'm modeling the lab for you, you guys are going to write all over this, jotting notes to yourself, learning from my experience and my mistakes as I show you how to do the lab so that you can then go do it on Friday. So now you're going, wait a minute, how is he going to show us how to do the lab if we're not in lab? And guys, the answer is this, and it's actually in the title of the lab. We are going to do this lab through virtualization software. Uh, we use the virtual chem software extensively in my AP class. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is I use this lab as the opportunity to show you how the software works so for those of you that are coming back for AP next year, you're at least familiar with the software. So guys, when we do this lab on Thursday, you are not going to get up and walk through that door. You're going to get up and get a laptop. 
and you are, and they're not here now, but they'll be back there by Hunter and Robert. Guys, you're gonna just grab a laptop and you're gonna do this lab with your lab partner through the virtualization software. So in just a second, I'm gonna throw that software up on the screen and I'm gonna do the lab in front of you. And we're gonna collect data and we're gonna analyze that data and that's exactly what you're gonna do on Thursday. Get the idea? Okay, so guys, what is that lab gonna be all about? Titration. So now you need to switch to your notes page and let's talk about just really briefly what is titration and how does it work and how do we solve the problems. This is going to be about half a page of notes. And then guys, we're just going to go do the lab and then you'll have time to work on your homework. So guys, what is titration? Get this stuff in your notes. So titration is dot, dot, dot. It is the process of determining the concentration of an unknown solution by comparing it with a solution that you know the concentration of. So guys, I know that that's fuzzy and I'm going to make it make a lot of sense in just a second. But guys, what I need to do is share with you a couple more terms. So what is titration? It's the process of determining the concentration of one solution by comparing it with another solution. So when we do this, we need two things. The first thing we need is what is called a standard. The standard is the solution that you know the concentration of. And then guys, the other solution is what we call the unknown. That is the solution that you are studying. So guys, here's what we know. Titration is the process of figuring out the concentration of one solution <clears throat> by comparing it with another solution. And when we do that, we give these two solutions names. The standard is the one that we know the concentration of, and the unknown is the one that we're studying. Hey, Tony. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Have you ever thought about doing this? Because this is the test you're taking on Monday. Five bucks, ten bucks. Come on, make me an offer. Uh, Fifteen. Do I hear twenty? All right. So, guys, what on earth does this mean? What is up with this idea of measuring through comparison? Well, guys, that's how you measure. Check this out. Stop taking notes and learn. Here's the deal. How long is this? It's a foot, right? It's 12 inches long. So, guys, this is what we call a standard. This is the thing that we know something about. In this case, this is a foot or 12 inches long. So now, guys, say that you want to know the height of this guy. How do we figure out the height of me given this? We compare. So we go one foot, two foots, three foots, four foots, five foots, and then a little bit of foots. And guys, how do we know when to stop moving the standard up the unknown? When we get to the point where we've got to the top, when we get to the point where we're finished. And how do you know when we're finished? When the ruler goes past the top of my head, right? And now you can read this and figure out how tall I am. So guys, this whole idea of measuring by comparing to a standard is not a foreign concept to you. It's the way you measure things. But here's the problem. It makes a ton of sense when you're using a ruler to figure out how tall you are, right? you know when to stop when you run out of me and then you can compare to the ruler. Guys, the question is this, how do we know when to stop when we're mixing one solution with another solution? Because guys, we can't see when you've done enough. So how do we know when we've done enough? And guys, the answer to that is we use what is called an indicator, which is the last term that you need to get into your notes. So guys, what is an indicator? An indicator, notice the definition on the board, indicates when you've added enough 
standard to the unknown. But you know what, guys? I'm going to add a little something to this. Indicates by changing color Come on, baby. Ah, come here. There we go. All right. So, guys, an indicator indicates by changing color when you've added enough standard to the unknown. It's kind of the thing that tells you, hey, you're done. Go take a reading. And these things are called indicators. The indicator that you're going to use in lab is called phenylphthalein, which is kind of fun to say. It's got like P's and TH's in it. All right, you guys all caught up with me? You understand this idea of measuring by comparison? The thing that makes it unusual, though, guys, is that you're going to measure by comparison mixing solutions together. So I'm going to show you how to do that in lab in just a minute, well, in the virtual lab. But guys, before we do, I need to share with you how to solve these problems. So guys, just write these down, then you're done taking notes, and then we're going to spend the rest of the day playing together and analyzing data. So guys, when you collect, after you've collected your data, the next thing that you need to do, this is driving me nuts, the next thing that you need to do is you need to analyze your data. So guys, these are the problem solving steps. Step number one is write a balanced equation. Now guys, here's the deal. All of these reactions will be Arrhenius acid-base reactions. And guys, when you hear the word Arrhenius, that should cause a little bit of panic. Because you're going, oh crap, I've heard of Arrhenius. I don't remember what it is. I'm pretty sure it's going to be on the test. Uh-huh. You need to print the study guide and get ready for Monday's test. Guys, this was all before spring break, and you don't remember anything before spring break. I know that because I don't either. I've forgotten most of your names. That's not true. But, guys, understand you don't remember before spring break. And so you need to go back and study. But because you don't remember, let me give it to you. An Arrhenius acid-base reaction says this. An acid reacts with the base and it forms salt, praying that you remember that salt is not just NaCl, and water. So you're going to write a balanced equation. Then step number two which involves some dimensional analysisization, is you're going to calculate the number of moles of standard. Then step number three, you're going to figure out the ratio of moles of standard to moles of unknown. This is a stoichiometric ratio that you will find in the balanced equation that you've already written because you did step one. And then guys, step four is to calculate the concentration of the unknown remembering that concentration is measured in the units of molarity and molarity is moles divided by liters and when you write that down you're almost done taking notes the only thing that you need to do after this is make up a data chart to collect the data that we're about to gather as I model the lab for you So guys, weird question is you're writing this stuff down because I know you're not thinking, you're just writing. So I think you can think about something else. Um, have most, have, have, and I don't really need an answer, but thinking about SAGE. Most of you have taken SAGE in English already, right? Do you need me to print those little admit tickets that have your SSID or have you sadly memorized them because you've taken SAGE so often you just know them? Do any of you not know your SSID? Okay, I'll print them. I'll, oh, you haven't done English Sage yet? Oh, never mind. Okay, I'll print, I'll print your tickets. Isn't that scary you know that? Yeah, you can't remember anything meaningful that you'd really like to remember, but you can remember that and music lyrics. <laughs> they can be. Are you guys all caught up? Okay, so guys, here's what you need to do. Take your notes page and flip it over on the back. Get a clean, get a clean paper. 
And guys, what you're going to do right now is you are going to create a data chart that is going to allow you to collect the data that we are going to gather from this lab that's also the data that you're going to collect when you do the lab on Thursday. Guys, this is your data chart. Scratch it into your notes on the back of the page so that you have a focused place to do this work. So guys, concentration of the standard, volume of the unknown, and volume of the standard. This is exactly the same data that you're going to be collecting on Thursday when you do the lab. So guys, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, maybe you could do this. Glance over at the lab. And if you look down at the data chart at the bottom, let me help you connect that they're the same. You'll notice the very first thing in your data chart is the molarity of the standard. That is this, the concentration of the standard. So you're going to write that down when you go to do the lab. Then guys, notice what it says below that and look at the way this is organized. You're going to do three trials. You're going to titrate HNO3, you're going to titrate HAC, and you're going to titrate HCN. Um, but notice the data that you're collecting for each trial. The volume of the acid and the volume of the base. Guys, that's this. The volume of the acid is the volume of the unknown. The volume of the standard is the base. So this data chart perfectly matches what's on the screen. It's just we're using different words on here than we did up there. But the data is all the same. Okay. So guys, here's what we're going to do. In just a second, I'm going to fire up the software. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow these procedure steps exactly like you're going to on, on Thursday. And we're just going to go through this. We're going to do the lab together. We're going to collect the data. And we're going to analyze this data and figure out the molarity of the unknown. So guys, before we do, are you guys all caught up with me? Before we do this, I want to show you what the software looks like. And guys, this software is actually brilliant. It was written by a guy named Dr. Woodside over at BYU. Um, he wrote a National Science Foundation grant about 15 years ago to develop this software. I don't know how he pulled this off, but he wrote this software on government money and then turned around and sold the software and made a profit. That's pretty good stuff. So Woodside and BYU no longer own this software. It is actually now owned by Pearson Education. Um, you can actually buy this from them off of Amazon anyway. But guys, when you get into this, this is what the software looks like. I'll show you how to get there in a minute. But guys, the thing that I'd like to drive home to you right now is how accurate this software is. So when you enter into this virtual lab, you're going to see this lab bench. And when you go into the lab, what you're going to see are the same things that you would see if you were actually in a lab. Because we understand that labs have lab counters, just like this. We understand that our lab counters have drawers, just like your drawers in lab. What's in those drawers? Things like beakers, which we're going to be using in just a minute. But guys, in addition to that, you'll notice that up here we have graduated cylinders. Guess what? You have graduated cylinders in your lab, it's just that these are already set out. But guys, in addition to that, there is some stuff that you've never seen before, like this thing, which is called a burette. The only thing they got wrong is our handles are blue and the one on the screen is orange. But guys, this is a burette and I want to explain to you the way that this thing works. So guys, what, and these are crazy expensive because they're really accurate. These are about $98 each. But guys, all this is is a graduated cylinder flipped upside down with a nozzle on the bottom. 
So just like a graduated cylinder, it has measurements that go up the side, but instead of being painted on, these have actually been engraved with a laser. They're very well done. Um, and guys, the trick is, is that zero is up here and 50 is down at the bottom. And guys, that should seem weird to you because when you think about a graduated cylinder, guys, where is the zero on a graduated cylinder? At the bottom. And the high number is at the top. Why is a graduated cylinder like that? Because on a graduated cylinder, you pour out of the top, so you want the, tall, the higher numbers at the top. Well, guys, this is flipped upside down. This is zero, and this is 50. Why is it like that? Because you don't pour out of the top, you drain out of the bottom. So guys, the way that this thing works is any time the handle is horizontal, it's shut off. And any time the handle is vertical, this is just distilled water, it leaks out the bottom. So if you start at zero, as this is open, it is leaking down, and you can actually then stop, and you can read how much is leaked. Get the idea? But here's the thing that's really cool about this. Check this out. If you barely open this, wait for it. Oh. If you barely open this, you can actually get it to drip one drop at a time. And guys, these drops actually represent hundredths of a milliliter. So you can measure volumes very, very accurately with these, with these um, burettes. Then guys, the other thing that I want to explain to you, and for some of you, you're going to find this life changing. Um, the other thing that you've never seen before that is in this lab is what is called an electric stirring plate. And let me explain to you how this works. See guys, when you are titrating, when you are adding solutions together, what you have to do is you've got to be able to stir the solution. But the problem is, is that when you stir this, you don't want to put a stirring rod in there because it just messes things up. So you need a way to stir this solution that doesn't cause problems. The way to do that is with this magic piece of equipment. You ready? This is what is called a magnetic stirring plate. Here's how it works. Inside this box, there's a simple electric motor um, that is connected to an on-off switch that's a speed control. On top of that motor, there is a magnet that is attached to the drive shaft of the motor. And when you turn this on, there is now a magnet that is spinning underneath the top of this plate. Well, guys, these come bundled with one of these, which is called a stir bar. This is basically just an iron nail that's been plastic coated so it doesn't react with stuff. And guys, this iron nail is attracted to the magnet that's underneath the, underneath the plate. You see where this is going, right? So guys, you turn this on and the magnet spins, but oh my gosh, as the magnet spins, the bar follows it. So then all we've got to do is take the bar, put it, in the beaker, put this back on here, holy smokes, the magnet works through the glass, and you turn this on, and the bar spins, and that stirs the solution. Oh, I know. <laughs> Guys, this is what is called a magnetic stirring plate. When you come back for AP next year, you get your very own magnetic stirring plate so you don't have to stir anything in AP because you just use this and it stirs it for you. Huh? Talk about an incentive to come back and do AP next year. You get your very own magnetic stirring plate. So, guys, the question then becomes this. How on earth can you get the bar out of the beaker once you're all done? Dun, dun, dun. Ta-da. There you go. So, guys, that is a magnetic stir. But, guys, you'll notice that this is represented right here. The colors are a little different, but that is this. This is the stirring plate. Get the idea? Okay. So guys, let's do the lab together. Here we go. All right. Let me clean up my mess a little bit. Guys, grab your labs and grab something you can write with, but don't put your notes page away because you need your data chart. 
All right, here we go. So we're going to go back up a page. Oh, that was it. No, come on. There we go. Okay, so we need that. And then we need, how do I do this? Let's try this. No. Um, huh. Maybe this. Okay. So we'll do this. And, oh, here's what I can do. Okay. So, guys, read over the procedure with me. You ready? Step number one, launch virtual chem lab. So guys, once you've logged into your computers, you will go to the start bar on the computer. I believe on your laptops, it'll be on the left. And you're going to find this icon that says VCL, it's purple, virtual chem lab. And you're going to click on it. While the software is starting up, guys, there's actually something that you need to write down in your procedure right now. Um, that isn't in the procedure, so you can just write it up the, off to the side. You ready? Turn up the volume all the way. Because when you do this lab, they've actually done such a nice job of doing this lab that they have included really helpful audio cues in terms of what's going on in the lab. And if you've got your volume turned down, you're going to miss out on all of that. So make sure that you turn up the volume on your computer when you do this. Okay, so step one, we've entered into virtual chem lab. Notice what you've got. There are actually five benches in this virtual world. Guys, the one off here, off to the left, is a gas lab. You can study gases. Then this is our titration bench. You'll notice that it kind of looks like the picture that I showed you. Guys, this is the inorganic bench. You're gonna love this in AP next year. Then guys, this bench right here, no, I'm wrong. This is the gases bench. This is the calorimetry bench where you can catch things on fire. Um, and then guys, this is cool. If you'd like to play with this on Thursday when you're done with the lab, you can. This bench right here is the quantum theory bench. You can do Rutherford's gold foil experiment. Sounds familiar, right? It's going to be on the final. You can do Millikan's oil drop experiment. You can do J.J. Thompson's cathode ray tube experiment. You can do all of those right here. Fiddle around with any of this that you want to when you're done with the lab. But guys, what you're going to do, as it says in step number two, you're going to enter into the titration lab, which is this one right here. So you enter into the lab, and here you go. And you'll notice, guys, that when this starts up, it looks exactly like the thing that I showed you just a minute ago on the lab. You good? Okay, so here we go, guys. Let's keep going. Step number uh, three is this. Uh, we've chosen the titration bench. Then step number four, enter the stock room in the upper left-hand corner. So, guys, that's this. If you look at the screen, you'll notice that there's this space up here that's called the stock room. Tyler, stick with me. So we go inside the stock room, and now we've got all of this stuff that we need in order to do the lab. So guys, reading along then, notice what it says. Um, step number five, place the 0.2099 molar HNO3 bottle on the counter. Now guys, I'm not going to do that. That bottle is right here. But I'm not going to do that because you're going to do that in lab. What I'm going to do is grab this guy over here, which is the HCL. So you're about to learn something. Guys, watch what happens. Watch closely. Would it be helpful if I turned out the backlights as well? Would that be good? Okay. So guys, watch what happens when I click on this bottle. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab this bottle. I'm going to click and hold and watch what happens. Did you see what happened? What changed? We get these circles down here. So guys, when I click and hold, the bottle leaps off of the shelf, and then I get these three circles down on the bottom. What that's telling you is those are the only places that you can put the bottle. You can't just stick it anywhere. It just goes back. So you can only put things where it becomes light. So I'm going to put the bottle right there. Listen carefully. Didn't work. Oh, my volume's turned down. Okay, let's try it again. Put it back. Grab it again. Huh? Oh, I know. 
Okay, then guys, step number six says place the sodium hydroxide bottle on the counter. And guys, I am going to do that. The sodium hydroxide's right here. We're gonna zoom out. Here we go, drop it there, and there we go. So guys, now let's talk and collect some data. So notice what, this bo what these bottles say. They tell us the molarities of the solutions, right? Here's the deal, guys. Sodium hydroxide is going to be your standard in all of your trials. So which one is the standard? What, do, what, what makes it the standard? We know its concentration. So guys, this is going to be our standard for the entire lab. But now you're going, wait a minute, we know the concentration of the HCl, and do you understand that that's a problem? Because guys, this is going to be our unknown. And now you're going, no it's not, because we already know the concentration. Well guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend like we don't know the concentration and then guess what you're going to do in lab because you really do know the concentration. Percent error. You are going to take your concentration that you figure out, compare it to what it should be, and you're going to calculate a percent error. Does that make sense? Okay. So guys, let's gather some data right now. We know the concentration of the NaOH 0.1104 molar, so let's go ahead and write that down. I'm going to jump over here, and we know the concentration of the standard, so let's write it down in our data chart. It's 0.1104 molar. And you know what you could do right now so you don't forget to do this in the lab? You may as well just write it in your lab right now, too. On the lab, you see, what does it say? It says molarity of the standard. It's also 0.1104 molar, so you could just write that down right now, too. Now, guys, understand that's all the data that you're going to collect on the lab because everything else is dependent upon your trials. But we're all going to use the same standard, and it's the 0.1104 molar NaOH. You guys good? Okay, so now back here, clean this up. Here we go. So guys, we are now on step seven, return to the lab. So guys, check this out. When you want to navigate in the lab, there's going to be arrows. So you'll notice that it says return to lab right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on that and look at what happens. Do you see what changed? What's different? Your bottles are sitting there. These are the bottles that you just put on the counter. Pretty good, right? Okay, so now guys, reading on, step number eight, bring the acid and base bottles into the lab. So guys, grab the acid bottle, and what's going to happen when I grab the acid bottle? White spots. There they are. Bring it in, and bring this bottle in, and set them down. Okay, what step was that? Eight? No, not, yeah, yeah, eight. So now nine, guys, notice what it says. Mouse over the burette and click to open a viewer window. So guys, this is the burette, right? And when you mouse over it, you'll notice that it says, open the burette window. When you click on that, notice what comes up. Can you, here, let me zoom into it. So guys, when you do that, we now have this viewer window, and it's as if you're doing this, and you're staring at the burette really, really closely. So it zooms in on where the, where the solution level is in the burette. So you're going to open up that window. And now, guys, let's start doing some chemistry. OK, so now we are on step 10. Fill the burette above the zero mark with the base. Now, guys, you're going to need to write something down next to this, so be ready to do that. So here's what you're going to do. We are going to grab the base bottle, the NaOH, and we are going to dump it in the burette. But guys, here's how you do it. Grab the bottle, hold down the mouse, and now you can move the bottle around. But here's what you're going to do. Sneak up on the burette from below. Okay? And as you sneak up on the burette, watch what the computer's going to do. It steals the bottle out of your hand, and it fills the burette. But guys, the thing that you couldn't see that you need to write down is this. Hold down the button. Next to step 10, you need to write down, hold down the button. 
Guys, if you do not hold down the mouse button, the burette will not fill all the way to the zero mark. So you'll know that you've done this successfully when, guys, look at what we've got right here. Over here, can you guys see that from a distance? You've got the meniscus. I love that they even added the meniscus. The meniscus is sitting right on the zero. Now, guys, where's the zero at the top or the bottom? the top. So this is now full all the way to the zero mark. Get the idea? Okay. So now guys, let's keep going. Let me go back and clean that up. And here we go. Okay. So now we've done that. So now we are on step 12. You're going to have to write something on 11. Oh, oh, I like this part. Open the beaker drawer and place a beaker on the bench. You ready? Open the drawer by clicking on it. Huh? Grab a beaker. And then don't forget to close the drawer so nobody trips on it. All right. Now, guys, we are ready for step 12. Fill the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder with acid um, and record the volume. So, guys, here's the scoop. Over here on these graduated cylinders, you'll notice that there's four of them. So you've got a 5 milliliter, a 10 milliliter, a 25, and a 50. We're going to use the 10, which is this guy right here, and we're going to put the acid that we don't know the concentration of in there. But guys, this fills differently. Pick up the acid bottle, and I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing because you can't see my fingers. So you're going to grab the acid bottle, again, sneak up on the graduated cylinder from underneath, and notice what the software did. It took the bottle out of my hand, but it's not filling the graduated cylinder. You have to let go. And when I let go, watch what happens. It fills the cylinder and puts the bottle back. So guys, next to step 12, write down the words, let go of the button. You've got to let go of the button on that one. Now guys, here's the scoop with these graduated cylinders. They are either full or they're empty. You can't partially fill them. So this is full to 10 milliliters. But guys, we are going to pretend that this is a graduated cylinder like we have in class that measures to whole milliliters, so we are going to estimate tenths. And notice what it says at the end of step 12, record the volume. So the volume then is 10 milliliters, so we're going to go over here and we are going to write down that volume. So the volume of our unknown is... 10.0 milliliters. Okay, so now guys, we are ready to do some tie trading. So here we go. What step are we on now? Okay, so step 13, pour the acid solution in the beaker. So grab the graduated cylinder that's got the acid in it, bring it over here pour it into the beaker. You'll notice, guys, that it's not filling the beaker because I have to let go. So now it poured that into the beaker. Then, guys, step 14, place the beaker on the stirrer and then turn on the stirrer. And guys, here's how you do that. See this button right here? This guy right here? Click on it and watch what happens. It starts stirring. That's pretty good. Okay. Then, guys, step 15. Underline step 15. If you skip step 15, you're going to be really unhappy. Step 15 says place, there it is, phenylphthalene. Uh-huh. Place phenylphthalene indicator into the beaker containing the acid. Guys, here's the scoop. Over here are all of the indicators that, you're, that, that you could use in this lab. The one that we're going to use is the one called phenylphthalein, which is the one right here that says P-H-E-N-O. We're going to use phenylphthalein. But guys, here's the problem. This is a little tricky. So guys, watch the way you do this. You're going to go over to the phenylphthalein, you're going to grab a hold of it, and notice what pops up, a little dropper. 
So then you're going to sneak up on the beaker from underneath, come up here, notice that it takes the dropper out of my hand, and then what have you got to do to make this work? Let go. But guys, check this out. No sound, nothing happens, you don't see any drops. How do you know that you added phenolphthalein if it doesn't give you any feedback? Something did change. What changed? Yeah, all the rest of the indicators grayed out, and the one that you added, phenolphthalein, is still dark. So you'll know you've done this right when everything else is grayed out and phenolphthalein is dark. So now, guys, we keep going. That was step 15. Now, guys, step 16. Ready? Carefully add the base to the acid until it turns pink. So guys, watch how this works. Just like with the burette that I showed you, you grab the handle, you open it up, and it flows. You move it down a little, it drips. But guys, here's the thing that's cool. Whether it's flowing or whether it's dripping, if you double click on the white part in the middle, it shuts off. So if you're doing this, and you double click, it shuts off. That doesn't happen in real life. But now guys, notice what's happening. As this drains, guys, keep your eye on the meniscus in the, in the viewer window. So as this drains, as this drains, keep an eye on the viewer window. See how it's going down? So that is showing you the water, the, the, the base level decreasing as it goes down. Now guys, as that happens, we're adding base to the acid. As we add base to the acid, it's neutralizing the acid. When this turns pH 7, which is neutral, we've added just as much base as acid, and that solution is going to turn pink because of the phenolphthalein indicator. So guys, we are waiting for this to turn pink. So what you're going to do is you do this lab, is you are going to wait for this to turn pink. Keep an eye on it, keep an eye on it, keep an eye on it. Oh crap, man. Ah, it turned red. Oh man, I totally screwed up because I went too far. But guess what? That's okay. Guys, what we have just done is what is called a gross titration. We went too far, but that's okay. Because here's what we now know. What we now know is that it took about 10 and a half. This is 11, this is 12, 10's up here. So it took about 10 and a half milliliters of base to neutralize the acid. So we didn't have to go drop by drop by drop all the way down to 10 and a half. We just ran down really fast to 10 and a half. So now what we're going to do, guys, now that we have a general sense of how much base it's going to take to neutralize the acid, we're going to do this lab entirely over again. We're going to run really quick down to 10, and then we're going to go drop by drop. That's what's called a gross titration. Now, guys, if you were actually doing this in lab, how long would it take to set this lab back up? 15 minutes? Guys, check this out. It takes about 20 seconds. Ready? Over here is the trash can, this red thing. If you click on the white lid, it cleans up the entire lab. Everything's gone. And now we're going to start over. Ready? Check this out. Go into the stock room, grab the acid, grab the base, go back out, bring these into the lab, bring this into the lab, open this, put this over here, close the drawer, close the drawer, grab the acid, Put it in, notice I held that down, open up the viewer window, that's at zero, take the HCL, put it in the 10 milliliter, put this in here, put this on here, add phenolphthalein, turn it on, I'm ready to go. That's all it takes. So guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to drain this like crazy down to 10, and then we're going to go drop by drop. Okay, so now we're close to 10. So now, guys, we're going to go drop by drop. And notice what I've done. I've put my, oh, poop. 
it was less than 10. We're going to clean up and we're going to go in here and we're going to do this all over. Boom, boom. So I guess we'd better stop at nine. I really overdid it. By the way, guys, when you come back for AP next year, we do eight titrations in, in AP lab where we actually do the titrations. You guys are going to do so many titrations, you're going to become mad. Oh, i got to put this on here first. Sorry, I'm talking when I should be focusing. Okay, so we got phenolphthalein in. We got 10 milliliters. We got the base. We're ready to go, right? Oh, stir. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Okay, so down to nine, right? This is like the world's most boring video game. Okay, there's nine. Now we're going to go drop by drop. And we're waiting for pink. So guys, I'm so ready to double click as soon as this turns pink. Boom. So now all we need to do is read our volume. What's that? But it was the first moment where I saw it change color, and I can't do any better than that. So as soon as that drop falls and you see the color change, boom, boom, double click, and you're done. Okay? So guys, we've got 9.2, but this measures in tenths, so we're going to estimate hundredths. What do you think? 9.20 or 9.21? Zero? 9.20? Oh, is it three? Wait, point one, point, oh, okay. So 9.30, would you go with that? Okay, so guys, 9.30 then is the volume of, why did that shift? That's weird. Is the volume of our, of our, of our base. So here's what we've got. We've got 9.3, We've got 9.30, we've got 10, and then what was this, 0 0.1104? Nice. All right, guys, that's it. That is all the data that we need in order to figure out the molarity of the acid. So guys, we're going to do this together. Are you ready to go? Down beneath your data chart, let's do the calculations. So remember, this is a four-step process. Write a balanced equation, moles of standard, mole to mole ratio, molarity of the unknown. So the first thing we need is a balanced equation. So let's write it. So guys, HCl was our acid. NaOH was our base. And guys, NaOH will always be our base. It will always be our standard. And then guys, our products are salt which in this case is NaCl salt and water, and this balances with all ones. Okay, so now guys, we need to just start doing the math. We've already got our balanced equation. So step one is we need to know the moles of our standard. So guys, look, we know two things about the standard. We know the concentration of the standard, and we know the volume of the standard. We're going to start with the volume. So we are going to start with 9.30 milliliters of our standard. And what we need to know is how many moles of our standard. So guys, how are we going to get from milliliters to moles? Well, we're going to convert to liters first. 1,000 milliliters is one liter. Now that we're in liters, how can we get from liters to moles? What do we call the relationship between liters and moles? Molarity. Guys, to go from liters to moles, we need to know the molarity, and we know the molarity. For every one, sorry, for every one liter, there's 0 0.1104 moles of NaOH. So now we do the math. So we have got 
9.30, divide that by 1,000, multiply that by 0 0.1104, and we get what, three significant digits? 0 0.00103 moles. That's step number two. Now guys, step number three goes like this. Take that number, bring it down. 0 0.00103 moles of NaOH. And what we now want to know is how many moles then of HCl had to be in the beaker. So now we need, check this out, the mole-to-mole -mole ratio between acid and base. And guys, where do we get mole-to-mole -mole ratios? Balanced equations. What is this balance with? All ones. So guys, one mole of NaOH reacts with one mole of HCl. Multiply and divide by one, the value doesn't change. Now guys, and forgive me, I know this is getting low on the page. Now we've got our last step. We are going to figure out the molarity, but molarity is moles divided by liters. Sorry, it's low. So how many moles of HCl did we have? 0 0.00103 moles. Now guys, all we need to know now is the volume of the HCl. But what was the volume of the HCl, do you remember? 10 milliliters, but guys, it's got to be in liters. So you can just do this behind the scenes. Divide 10 by 1,000, because there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. That's this number right here, and we get 0 0.01, but then, guys, we still need three significant digits. So it's 0 0.0100 liters. And now we do the math, 0 0.00103 divided by 0 0.0100. And guys, this is three significant digits, 0 0.103 molar HCl. So guys, we're not going to do this right now, but what will you do in lab on Thursday then when you're all done with this? percent error. But let's see how we did. So we just figured out that the molarity of this was 0 0.103. What is it for real? 0 0.1104. Oh, po oh my gosh, never mind. It's perfect. We were off by one thousand. Holy smokes, we didn't. It's this one. We got 0 0.103. That's pretty cool. So guys, we were off by a 10,000th of a molarity step. That's 0.01%. That's pretty good. We're good. The guys, this stuff works. So here's where we're at. Um, grab your homework packets. And guys, this is homework assignment number five. There are five of these for you to work. Two things to share with you, and then I'm going to get out of your hair. Don't forget to write balanced equations. Because, guys, you ready for this? Don't miss this. They don't always balance with all ones. Then, guys, thing number two that I need to mention to you is this. Back on your labs, because remember, I'm not going to help you next time, right? Guys, read step number 20. You're going to redo this lab. Step 18 says clean up. Step 19 says do it again with HAC. Step 20 says do it again with HCN. Guys, notice at the end of step 20, it says using nitramine indicator, underline that. In step 20, when you redo this lab with HCN, you will not use phenolphthalein as your indicator. You're going to use nitramine. It's a different indicator, and it doesn't turn pink. It turns yellow. Make sure that you do that for when you redo the lab the last time with HCN. If you don't, it'll never turn pink, and you're going to go nuts.
Okay, so guys, we have got eh, 10 minutes. You can probably get a couple of these titration things done. So guys, when I see you on Thursday, we will turn in the Le Chatelier's Principal Lab. We will grade this homework, and then you're just going to have time to do the lab. You guys good to go? Go get them.